Hi guys, welcome back. So I promised you last time that uh, after we found the equations, the four equations for perpetual law and current law, that today we would solve them. So here we are, going to solve those equations. The other thing that I realized after I posted the video about perpetual law and current law was that really there was an implied relationship that we uh, used in order to write those guys down. So let me just remind you what they are. We have our circuit, the same circuit we used in the previous two videos. Um, and I simply wrote down for delta V1, I wrote down 4.3 times I1. But really, I could have written Kirchhoff's voltage law as minus 11 plus delta V1 plus delta V2 equals zero. And then written down delta V1 equals 4.3 times I1 as a separate equation. Because that is actually a separate equation. That's Ohm's law. But we sort of assumed it. We just sort of cooked Ohm's law in as we wrote these equations down. And uh, I, I really didn't say much about that. And I just wanted to point out that that's a thing we did. If we hadn't done that, we would have had these four equations in terms of delta V1, delta V2, delta V3, delta V4, I1, I2, I3, and I4, we would have actually had eight unknowns. But then we would have four more equations, Ohm's law for each of those four resistors. Delta V1 is 4.3 I1, delta V2 is 5.6 I2, and so on. And that would have given us eight equations and eight unknowns. So when we write these guys down, we're actually writing down um, <clears throat> those, these four equations already have Ohm's law incorporated. That's the way that works. So let's go ahead and, and look at these guys. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that we can immediately get rid of two variables here by replacing I2 and I4 with I1 and I3. Well, how the heck are we going to do that? Well, the way we'll do that is to look at those bottom two equations and notice that I can write I3 as uh, the difference between I1 and I2. That thing going. There you go. So, <clears throat> um, so I don't know why it wants to. Uh, there we go. I two is I one minus I three. I can also write I four in terms of I three, and the current source one point eight. And once I have that, now I can go up into those top two equations. And we can get rid of I2 and I4 by substituting in these expressions. So, for example, in that top equation, I can replace I2 with I1 minus I3. I can move the 11 to the other side. Now you'll notice I've got, if I distribute that 5.6 over the binomial there, I can move the I1s together. And if I do that, I get the following expression. So I get 9.9 .9 times I1, and I get minus 5.6. Then I can do the same thing for the second equation. First, I can replace I4 with I3 plus I8. Let's do that. And then uh, I can collect all the I3 terms together. I've got a 2 and I've got a 9.1. So that's going to give me an 11.1. <clears throat> now I can replace I2 with I1 minus I3. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that now the 5.6 I'll distribute and then collect the I3s together again. And when the smoke clears, I end up with these two equations. So I've now, the top two equations, I've now gotten rid of I2 and I4 completely. They're only in terms of I1 and I3. So now I can move that top equation. Let's scoot it over here where we have no room. And then let's solve for I1 in terms of I3. We'll uh, collect terms together and then approximate the fractions as decimals. Okay, so I get I1 approximately equal to 0.566 I3 plus 1.11. I've gotten rid of the units because uh, it's just easier to talk about it without the units. Some folks might uh, wish that I had kept the units in there, but I, for whatever reason, I decided that it was easier to get rid of the units for now. You should understand that this expression, since we divided by 5.6, which is a resistance in ohms, uh, what used to be 16.38 volts is now 1.11 amps. So that Everything here <clears throat> is in amps. So let's do the same thing with that next equation. I uh, I want to solve this now for I 
well, let's just play with it for a little bit. Let's uh, go ahead and put in what I1 is, and then we'll solve for I3. Okay, so we'll combine terms, combine terms again, solve for I3, and we get minus 0.75 amps. Now, once I have I3 isolated, I can put it back into the equation above. I can solve for I1. So let's do that. <laughs> And then we get a result for I1 is 0.69 amps. Now I can go and move I2 down here and put in I1 and I3 and calculate a value for I2. And you can see that that works out to be about 1.44 amps. And then I can go and do the same thing with I4, put in the value of I3, calculate I4's value of 1.58. So that is it. We went through <coughs> and more step by step, we got rid of uh, unknown variables by manipulating the equation, and we now have an answer for all four currents. Um, but that's not all, because now that we've got all four currents, I can go back to the circuit, and for example, I can calculate the voltage of that red node, the node that just turned red. Calculate that guy's voltage. Notice it's the same thing as delta V2, because remember the voltage of the ground node, the node at the bottom, is zero. So I'll just calculate delta V2. Of course, you can see from the picture, it's simply 5.6 times I2. Put in the value, 1.44 amps for I2, and I get 8.06 volts. I can do the same thing for the other node that's going to turn red here. There he is, he's red. And as you can see, that one is just uh, delta V4, which is the same thing as 9.1 times I4. So I'll go ahead and calculate that guy. And uh, that turns out to be 9.56. So now we really do know everything there is to know about the circuit. I know the voltage of every node. I know the current in every branch. So we are done. I want to point out now. Uh, of course, I worked this all out for the for the video. <clears throat> it does take some manipulation to do this. It does take some time. And there's just an awful lot of opportunity for errors. So you have to constantly check yourself to make sure it makes sense. Um, and it just takes lots of practice. So we're going to be getting lots of practice solving circuits in this way using Kirchhoff current and voltage law. Another kind of thing I'll be doing is I'll solve a bunch of circuits like this, and then I'll give you guys pieces and parts and ask you to solve for the other parts. So, for example, if I told you I1 and I2, without having to solve all the equations, could you work out I3? Yeah, of course you could, because you know I2 plus I3 has to equal I1. And so on, right? If I gave you I2 and I4, could you work out something else? For example, I1 and I3. And the answer is yes, you could, because you know Kirchhoff's current law. Now I could do another tricky thing. I could say, what if I gave you I2 and delta V4? Now you'd have to use Ohm's law to get I4, and then with I4 and the 1.8 amps, you could get I3, and then with I3 and I2, you can get I1, and so on. So you can um, you can use Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. If you've got partial information about a circuit, you can figure out the rest without having to solve the entire circuit the way we just did. So that's an important skill. So you need to be able to get familiar enough with what Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law say that you can uh, you can find unknowns given given some known values. Okay. All right. So one last thing I want to do. Um, I'm going to point out. Let me go ahead. I'm going to point out that I have cooked up a uh, a website. It's basically a GitHub repository um, for you guys to use to do numerical work. And I just want to point out how that thing works. I'll send up. I'll, I'll post a link to that this thing in the LMS for you. I call it PyTool. It's really just some text files. But the cool thing is the README has has a link to a, what's called a binder. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it gets fired up. Um, I just want to point out that I can go up here and say new Python 3. It will be using Python for a lot of this. Also, we'll be using MATLAB and Octave. I want to show you how they all work just so that if you need them in the future, that you can at least have some familiarity with how these guys go. Um, so I'm going to say import SymPy as SP. So that SymPy is a package that's for doing symbolic manipulation. So um, 
what I'm going to do is say, let's make some symbols here. I'll tell you what, I'll make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this back to our original four equations. Those are our original four equations that we had. I'll just set those right there, move this over here. <clears throat> so I'm going to call the first equation um, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we got four equations, equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, equation 4. So, um, so we're going to need three symbols. The symbols are going to be I1, I'll say I, uh, I1, I2, I3, and I4. And we need to create SymPy symbols for those. So I'm just going to say SymPy symbols I1, I2, I3, I4. It's a little weird syntax. You use, a, you just make a literal string. Like if you were doing C, C programming, you, this would be a literal string with spaces between them. And then the things on the left are the actual variables that are getting created, the symbol variables that we're going to use to solve the problem. Basically, think of it as this. I1, I2, I3, and I4 are just symbols that stand for the currents in the first branch, second branch, third branch, and fourth branch. And what I want to do is to define equations. Let's say uh, function 1, we'll call it, is minus 11 plus 4.3 times I1 plus 5.6 times I2. Okay? Function 2 is the second equation, minus 5.6 times I2. I2 plus 2 times I3 plus 9.1 times I4. That's it. The third function is I, I3 plus I2 minus I1. And the fourth function is I4 minus 1.8 minus I3. That's it. <clears throat> so I've, I've literally just typed in the four equations. I've defined the four unknowns, and uh, I can just ask SymPy to solve this. Solve the four equations, F1, F2, F3, and F4. It always solves for equations that should be equal to zero. And I want to solve for the four unknowns, I1, I2, I3, and I4. Boom. And that's it. And I get my answer. So it's really super easy using the computer to solve four equations and four unknowns. There's very little chance for error as long as you type the equations correctly and you get the answer immediately. So there's really little reason to have to do these all these manipulations by hand, although it is important that you understand how they work and what they're doing. Um, anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in class next time.